Well, let's get more on this now with John Herbst in Fairfax, Virginia. He's a former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine and a senior director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Good to have you with us, Ambassador. Can I start with the latest in U.S. military aid, another $400 million worth to Ukraine on top of the $29 billion that The Hill is reporting the U.S. has already spent on weapons for Kiev. Is it fair to say that Ukraine really couldn't be making the progress that it's made so far without the ongoing support from Washington? Without a doubt, American and European assistance to Ukraine, military and economics is essential to help Ukraine defeat Putin in Ukraine. And Ambassador, there is in some corners of the Republican Party some growing discontent about what they see is a blank check that's being written to Ukraine at the expense of the American taxpayer. Should there be a limit to what the U.S. spends on this war? Uh, fortunately, it's not growing. It may be a bit louder, but in fact, the populist wing of the Republican Party, which has an isolationist streak, did very badly in the last elections in November. So they're smaller as a group than they were six months ago. But point of fact, the United States is not doing a favor for Ukraine. The United States is doing smart, uh, a smart policy to defeat Moscow's threat to the United States and vital interests by helping Ukraine defeat Russia and Ukraine. We're giving substantial aid. But Putin's objective is not just to conquer Ukraine. It's to establish effective political control throughout the space of the former Soviet Union, which means he wants effective political control over three NATO allies, Bal the Baltic states. We are defending ourselves in sending this aid to Ukraine. We heard their ambassador uh, correspondent talk about what's happening in the eastern city of Bakhmut. This is the city in, in the east of Ukraine that's seen some of the worst fighting in the conflict so far. The Wagner Group, uh, the mercenaries, say it's surrounded uh, Bakhmut. If they do manage to take it, it would be a rare victory for Russia. But overall, how would you assess Moscow's progress at this point of the war? Moscow's military has largely been stopped in Ukraine. They are still controlling territory that they conquered since last February, but they've lost more than 50% of what they've conquered, and they have yet to achieve a victory since those initial games. You're right, if they take Bakhmut, they will call it a big victory, but it's a small one, and more a Pyrrhic victory, because the cost in Russian personnel and in Russian hardware has been enormous. And given uh, the costs uh, that Russia has suffered so far, both in terms of uh, soldiers and, and the military aid that it's used in the conflict so far, do you believe the threat of a Russian spring offensive is a real one? And is Ukraine prepared for that? Well, we're seeing the Russian spring offensive right now. Um, they might be able to do a little bit more than they're doing at the present time, but not a lot more. The Ukrainians with, again, uh, American and European weapons, have exacted a great toll on Russian soldiers and Russian hardware. Estimates are that they have destroyed up to 50% of Moscow's conventional military capability. Okay, Ambassador John Herbs, we will have to leave it there, but really good to get your analysis. Thank you again for joining My us. My pleasure. Thank you.